Hey guys, it's Trevor Plouffe coming to you live from vacation to tell you there are 100 million reasons why you should listen up. DraftKings, the leader in one-day fantasy sports, is celebrating the return of sports by giving away up to $100 million in prizes to all of their customers, including one lucky winner who will take home a $1 million cash prize. To claim your share of up to $100 million in instant giveaways, all you have to do is download the app and sign up using promo code JOMBOY, and then enter DraftKings' free football survivor pool. Yes, it really is that easy to claim your share of up to $100 million in instant giveaways and put yourself in the running to win a $1 million cash prize. While the top prize is reserved for one lucky winner, Everyone who signs up and enters DraftKings' free football survivor pool will receive an instant bonus of at least $5 in value upon entering. While you're in the app, don't forget to check out all of the great daily fantasy contests DraftKings is hosting for this week's basketball and golf action. Download the DraftKings app now and use promo code JOMBOY to claim your share of $100 million in instant giveaways and put yourself in the running for the $1 million cash top prize. That's promo code JOMBOY, J-O-M-B-O-Y, to get your share of $100 million in prizes, only at DraftKings. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Sequence. I'm your host, Trevor Plouffe, and back for a bat number two, our guy, Justin Morneau, number 33. What's up, Justin? We do, Plouffe. I'm doing good. We just went over an awesome bat against Max Scherzer. We talked some Maurer. We talked some Jim Leland. We talked about Prince Fielder giving me some cool advice. And I said, next to bat, I'm going to try to remind you of something to see if you remember the advice that you gave me because I will never forget this day. We were in New York. It was a day game. And you called me out and you said, come do come run with me. That was your routine pregame on a day game was to go out there and get your legs under you, sprint a little bit. So you informed me that they had just designated Luke Hughes for assignment and that it could have been me. And right then I was like, I freaked out a little bit because I was in the big leagues. I hadn't done anything, but like that was my dream. I was there and I was just kind of happy to be there. And throughout that process of getting ready, you were just explaining to me like, look, man, if you want to stay here, you got to change some, some things up. You got to change your routine up. Again, I just remembered being like shocked that Luke was gone. You telling me this. And I was like, I'm going to listen to Justin Morneau. That was 2012. Fast forward like two weeks from there. I get an opportunity at third base. They sent Valencia down and I went off. And it was because I was preparing with you and I was... I remember. I remember like it was yesterday too. I didn't know you actually remember that or not. I mean, I had, and I remember talking. I remember talking about preparation and routine and how important that was. And you know, I I appreciate the fact that you remember that. That's pretty. That's pretty cool. But it, it was one of those things where, for me, the routine. When I once I settled in on my routine and I figured out what that was, what I needed to do to get ready, then it was easy. If I was struggling with something, you know, specific, I could. I could add that into my routine or I could work on one thing, but I knew exactly what I needed to do to get my swing where I want it to be. And, and, you know, for me, you know, so many kids, once they get out of T ball, think they should never hit off the T. And until the last day I played in the big leagues, I hit off the T every single day. If I did nothing, I hit off the T. So that was my first thing. And then I did flips and, you know, I added in flips and then I would change speed on the flips as opposed to just hitting fastballs. I would go back and forth on those things. And, and, and then I would try and face some live arm. And, and, and then if I was struggling with left-handed breaking balls, I would turn the machine on and hit some of those left-handed breaking balls to force myself to track the ball or anticipate the break or whatever I wanted to do. So for young players, it's so hard to know what that is, what you need to do to get ready to play 162 games in, in the big leagues. And, and, and I think the other thing I remember about that conversation was telling you that you never know when that opportunity is going to come you have to be ready for when that day is and then you take advantage of it. And even though you're not, I think I said, even though you're not playing today, you don't know if somebody's going to get hurt or you don't know when that opportunity is going to come. And, and yes, it might not look like you're going to be able to get at bats because of Valencia and whoever else, you know, guys are there, but no team stays healthy for the entire season. You don't know where that opportunity is going to come and when it's going to come. And I'm glad to see that you took advantage of it and got yourself a nice career. And now we're talking about it. We got in the back queued up here. This is August 31st, 2013. One of your last days with the Twins. Last the last day 
with the Twins, and we're facing you, Darvish, in Texas. Um, and this is a cool bet. I was here. I was playing in the game. Joe's Nathan's comes into this game and closes us out, which is pretty cool, even though I did get a base hit off you, Joe, in the ninth inning because I looked that up. <laughs> uh, but let's uh, let's kind of cruise into the bat. Here we have Chris Herman just took him up top. Yeah, you Darvish was throwing a shutout to this point. Chris pumped him into the stand. So, yeah, now a we got dual a heater turns on it. Yeah. We got you up so, there, 2-2 in the seventh, 86 pitches. Oh, so this – so to me, Darvish threw – Sometimes they call it a cutter. Sometimes they call it a slider. To me, he just combined the two pitches and sometimes threw it harder than the other. But a cutter and a slider to me, unless the tilt is so much different, I just kind of grouped them in the same. Yeah. I knew they were both going to be breaking in towards me. So he threw, at this point in his career, he threw more slider cutter than he did four-seam fastball. So this whole game, I was just, I was looking slider. I said, all right, at some point, you know, to me, hitting – and trying to be a smart hitter is to look for the pitch, pitch you're most likely going to see. Now, when you don't know what that is or it's an even across the board, your default is usually fastball because it's a lot easier to adjust to something slower than it is to look slow and adjust to something faster. But off him, I was confident at some point in this game he was going to throw me a he was going to throw me a slider. So we go through this at bat first pitch. I'm looking slider, and and I can tell by watching my at bat that I was looking slider. He set up a way as part of the issue here, but see, I, my hands start towards the ball, but oh, oh, I'm looking, I'm looking for something middle to come and middle in, something that I can pull that I can get my barrel underneath and, and meet that break. So two Fastball, non-competitive, but see there, you can see my take is soft there. It looks like I'm seeing the ball really well. In truth, all I'm doing is looking for 87 instead of 94. So my take is soft, my foot lands soft. I think it's the same thing on this pitch too is, is I'm looking off speed. So I'm letting that ball travel. I'm not worried about catching up to the fastball. Mm. So he missed the zone there. My hands don't move. It's, it's something that ball's moving away from me. I have no interest in swinging that pitch. So now I'm confident with how many sliders he throws that he's going to give me something breaking in towards me right here. He, he got away. I get, I, he got away with the first one. That's what I'm telling myself. Backdoor that. slider. He got away with that. Then yep. splitter, then heater. All and I wasn't looking to hit an oppo homer on it. I figure if it's cutter slider, he wants to get it, you know, under my hands or whatever it is. So if I'm looking for that backdoor slider, maybe I hit it, but that's not the location I was looking for that pitch. So number one, I was looking slider, but number two, I wasn't looking for slider anywhere in the zone. I was looking for it in a, in a place where I felt like I could drive it. So like that. take that one, take the next two pitches. Now I'm sitting here confident that if he throws it to me, I'm, so while I'm standing there, you can see me standing there. I'm looking at my bat, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, and I did this subconsciously, I think, but I'm anticipating what that pitch is and what it's going to feel like coming off my bat before I even step in the batter's box. So I'm, I'm seeing that ball, you know, that mental game like I was talking about off the tee. I'm seeing that ball coming out of his hand before I even step in the batter's box. So that way when I see it in the game, I'm actually not surprised by it. it it's what I was looking for. It's, it's what I anticipated. So then I'm able to jump all over it. And, and you can tell that I was sitting on it just because of the timing and the balance. There's no hesitation of foot gets down. I'm looking for fastball. Oh, that's not a fastball. I'm going to adjust as the ball's on its way to a plate. This one, I was sold out to the slider here. And he um, throws it exactly where I was looking. I can tell. I love that you said like, I can tell that you are sitting soft because your approach is soft. And yeah. there's a guy. The foot's landing. The head's not bouncing. I yeah. used to, when I would feel rushed, and I and I actually texted this today to Reese Hoskins because he looks like a, he's a click too fast right now. The, the thing that I found that helped me the most when I was rushed was curveball BP. Like I had someone go in there and just throw me curveballs. It just slows everything down. You kind of get in a good space, and you can see like kind of how you're setting up right now. You said, I'm looking soft. Everything is soft, and it kind of, like I said, just slows you down. And even if you're sitting soft like you are, if he threw a heater – dead middle you're still going to get to it yeah i think you, so too i talked to Tommy about that yeah he said the year he had 50 he he sat off speed the entire year it helps a lot man it's a <laughs> weird thing to like try to like wrap your head around but it's just because your approach uh mimics what you're thinking so yeah you slow down then your eyes take over and you recognize pitches all right so two one <clears throat> sitting soft are you gonna get it i think you are two one pitch oh it's going to be a 3-2 game. As Everything about it is exactly what you're talking about. Just watch how 
calm you are. Like you wait on this pitch to get there, then bam. And it's not a swinging. Like if I miss this, I'm not going to fall over. My balance is good. You know, it's there. I'm tracking the ball. Let it get deep. It's it's one of those things where, and then it's so pure when you get it. Oh, just clicks, bro. And it's just it's such a good feeling. I didn't know at the time that this was going to be my last homer as a twin. <laughs> But it felt good. I mean, I, I was, I went through a stretch this year. This is 13. I went through a stretch this year of like two and a half months or something without hitting a homer. And then all of a sudden I started to find my swing and I started to get hot and I was hitting a lot of homers at that time. So I was confident in my approach, but you see, you can see the timing is what I was talking about there. Mm-hmm. There's no hesitation of foot gets down, click half second recognition. It's foot gets down. I'm, 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 Sold out right there. That's a slider. And then, of course, it's middle-middle. People will say, oh, if you're looking fastball, you'd hit that anyway. Not necessarily. Mm-hmm. I've broken my bat on that pitch plenty of times when I'm, I'm thinking fastball in. I'm thinking 94, 96 on the inner part of the plate. Then that's a rollover. It's a broken bat, whatever it is. There, I give, my, I give myself a chance to hit the pitch he was most likely to throw. And that's the way I kind of looked at it a lot of times. So that was a good feeling there. That uh, was it's, nice. It's, uh, I don't know, my... I mean, it's crazy the stuff that we can remember by watching stuff and, and see even remember back to what, what we were thinking mentally at that time because, I mean, as much as the game's physical, it's, it's mental and, and what you feel. And I think that the best thing I ever heard was from Larry Walker. And he said, the only stat I ever worried about was going one for one my next at bat. <laughs> and if, you, like if you're able to simplify it that much, to know that short memory, it, love that. If you're three for three or over three, that fourth at bat is the only one that matters. It doesn't matter what you've done in those previous three at bats. And when you're going through a tough time, it is the absolute hardest thing to do not to let it snowball on you and not to sit there and let it just pile up and pile up because post game, you're over your last 18. How do you feel? You not can't good. just sit there and go, I don't <laughs> care about those 18 at bats. You, you, you kind of have to answer the question. You have to talk about what you're feeling and I'm not seeing the ball well or whatever it is. Well, uh, you know, I've been watching, I feel like hitters have struggled in the early part of the, of the season, the shortened season Very and much, camp yeah. and everything else. And, and it, it's hard because I just want to reach out and say, you know, the only at bat that matters is the next one, not the last one. The only at bat that matters is the one that's coming up because whether you go one for one or 0 for one, it's not going to erase the 10 for 20 or the 0 for 20. That's done. That's in the past. And the yes. quicker you can move on from that, and the quicker you can just focus on the next at bat, the next, the process, the next pitch. And it's easier said than done. It's probably the hardest thing I think to do in baseball is, is be able to go at bat to at bat and not let the last one affect the next one. So I think you should reach out, man. I'm telling you, your, your words carry weight. You've done it. And if I'm still playing and I'm slumping and I get a text from, from Morney, it's going to help me, man. But if you think about what's the, what's the one thing that happens all the time when you're, when you're struggling, when you're going through a slump, you get advice from seven different people. Yeah, but you're not seven different people, bro. No, but it doesn't matter. It's one of those things. It's like how many more voices do you need to be able to figure out that once you start seeing the ball again, then... I think if you get into specifics, if you're like, hey, man, I see something you're doing, like maybe give this a try or, or an adv- advice like that that's very general, like, hey, just like fuck whatever has happened the last two weeks, like doesn't matter. I mean, that's like kind of what Prince told me that I've remembered forever. Like, don't worry about that, dude. Like, we're, you'll see what kind of player you are at the end of the year. And that gave me a lot of confidence. There's some guys, yeah, there's some guys that you could reach out to that would – that would yeah, appreciate just that. Unsolicited advice is not always the best. Uh, <laughs> they can well. That's I feel you. But just if it's from someone you don't want advice from, yes. But I think guys would like uh, to hear from you. So uh, I appreciate you coming on, man. That was like a master class in hitting. But again, catch Justin um, on Fox Sports North uh, doing the Twins games along Dick Bremer. When are you back? September fourth or fifth. I have almost every game in September. So love we'll it. See. Uh, We'll see once the kids go back to school and start working and hopefully it's uh, all right, a pen and chase time and we get some good games. So I think the twins are going to be doing all right at that time. So we'll see them and then they got to get off. Uh, they got to get rid of the Yankees. We all know that. And we'll end it there because people are going to be really mad that I said that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Morning. Thank you for coming on, dude. And again, always a pleasure catching up.